dogs. The Lord of the Rings basically live forever. After they die, their spirits go to the halls of wonder. Think of this as a fancy hospital where they're reincarnated into the same body. But do you know what else is cool? Deus Ex Machina, an unexpected power saving me from a seemingly hopeless situation, especially as a contrived plot device in a play, movie, or in my life. Imagine if every time I was stuck, problem, life, girlfriend, something magical could happen and problem gone. Deus Ex Machina. Every time an eagle rocks up in Lord of the Rings, Aquilus Ex Machina. You know what other movies awesome? Inception. In the movie, people waste their time being addicted to life inside their heads. The world becomes better than real life. We can't do that now, but we might in the future. If only there was a way to get there. If we could step inside a box, freeze time for you, only you, and no one else, then it'd be as simple as entering in the present, exiting in the future. Cryonics, and we've been here before. The Freya broke her hip badly. Unfortunately, she couldn't be saved. So over the next 70 days, her body was prepared for preservation. They left only the most important organ inside her body, the one with all the memories, and removed the rest. Nefreya's heart, of course, was the only organ left inside her body. Ancient Egyptians believed the heart, not the brain, was the most important organ. Nefreya wasn't royalty either. In ancient Egypt, if you can afford it, your body would be mummified, preserved for the afterlife. And the Egyptians had the right idea, preserving the body, but they went about it the wrong way. The Egyptian priests would liquefy the brain and drain it out through the nose. The goal of Chronics today is to keep the brain. The brain with all its thoughts, memories, beliefs. Once we have the tech, your brain is all we really need. The logic is sound if we take Pascal's wager. Pascal? Wager goes something like this. You have one choice to make, and there are two potential outcomes. Either you choose to do cryonics or not, and either cryonics works or it doesn't. Using the French philosopher's logic, even if it's unlikely that cryonics will ever work, or that our current methods of freezing the body are right, the best option, because it's the only option that has an upside, is to do cryonics. So let's follow two people, David Lister and Arnold Rimmer. They both enter cryonics at the same time. Lister suffers from a heart attack and is rushed to the hospital. Rimmer dies in an accident at home and was found a few hours later. On Rimmer's death, he was sent to the cryonics clinic. But Lister awoke in the hospital, upset that they administered CPR. Whilst explaining his do not revive status to the doctor. He suffered from another heart attack. His medically dead but still revivable body was rushed to be cryopreserved. Now this doesn't mean freezing. When you look at an icicle, you see the little crystals. If you froze a body, those crystals would puncture all the cells, essentially making preservation pointless. Cryonic starts by getting the heart and lungs pumping again. This is to circulate the blood. Then slowly they remove the blood and replace it with an antifreeze. So now the temperature of the body can be lowered without ice crystals forming. Both the Lister and Rimmer are placed in liquid nitrogen for 50 years. And at this time we can't revive them yet. But we will in the future because they are six machina. I'll admit that in the future we will probably solve death. But saying in the future is just a convenient way out. Time is an easy solution to the questions we don't yet have 
the answer to. The singularity, when AI will solve all the problems of the world. God against the machine, cryonics. Our best guess at how to jump into the future. Except we know it works. We're not like the ancient Egyptians destroying the only organ that matters. February 2016, we successfully cryopreserved a rabbit's head and brought it back to life. The truth is, death is simply a grayscale. 500 years ago, an infected cut in battle was death. A heart attack, instant death. Asthma attack, likely death. A bad cold, death. Before the invention of modern medicine, you were either alive or dead. In the 20th century, we actually had to invent two new terms. Clinically dead, legally dead. Because people who were dead kept waking up. So if you were cryopreserved whilst you are clinically dead, but not legally dead, you have a better chance of waking up in the future. So the year is 2300. The year Arnold Wimmer is coming back from the dead. As a hologram, unfortunately for him, in 2089, they couldn't reach his pod for six months due to an earthquake. Luckily for him, cryopreservation doesn't require power. But only his head survived. David Lister was the only one in the audience. Every day, there's new people being turned back on. So no one comes to these things anymore. Lister has been out for a hundred years and was excited to talk about the past. <gasps> Rumor wakes up. Lister explains what the future's like. Pollution, smog, way too hot weather. The future. It's not fun. Lister shows Rumor this new virtual reality game. It's all the rage in the future. Everyone's playing it. If you plug into the game, you can experience whatever you want. I want to see my mum, says Rimmer. Both Lister and Rimmer jump into the game and live their lives enjoying life in the past with their family. So why cryonics makes sense? The odds are stacked against you. The chances you'll come out the other end alive are so low, it's almost not worth talking about. But I guess this is the point. There is a chance, no matter how small, your chance of getting a second life are infinitely higher than anyone who hasn't been preserved. And as humans, we really like hope.